Oh, that's the thing about tongue twisters, isn't it? Um, they're designed to get us tricked up, uh, and the faster we go, the harder it is. Um, interesting thing about this passage this evening from James chapter 3 is that it uh, is one of my favourite wedding passages ever. I had someone who was obsessed with aircraft for their wedding wanted me to use James chapter 3 because it's the only place in the Bible where the word pilot appears. It doesn't matter that it's in relation to a ship. So I thought, all right, challenge accepted. And boy, did they get a wedding sermon about how they should all talk to each other, especially the in-laws. Well, let us pray. May the things we think, the things we say and the things we do be always acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength, our hope and future. Amen. St. Jimmy returns to one of the key themes of his letter, getting a handbrake on our mouths. He begins by taking aim at anyone with half an inkling to teach or preach says, if you're going to do that, you better pull on the handbrake. For 2,000 years, the church has had to deal with a whole bunch of folks who think they've got something to say. Even the great St Paul, who was one of the smartest men in any room in his day and probably one of the smartest men that ever lived, he had to go and have a personal sit-down with St Jimmy and the Jerusalem crew when he came to town so that they could check if Paul was preaching the same thing as them about Jesus. Jimmy's warning has obviously gone straight over a lot of people's heads because every Tom, Dick and Harry with a smartphone and an internet connection these days fancies themselves as being a Bible teacher or preacher. There's a very good reason why the church spends a very long time discerning who is called to teach and then they send them away for years of training before they'll even let them loose and even then some of us don't turn out so well because the tongue is a lethal weapon it is so small yet it can steer thousands of people to their doom like the rudder of the titanic steering the ship towards the iceberg It's a stain that not even sard wonder soap can get out. It's like wrestling a cranky saltwater crock. It's a bucket of poison. It can cause the spiritual and relational equivalent of the black summer bushfires on a 50 degree January Arvo. So no, don't anyone be in a hurry to be a teacher of the scriptures. Yet he does offer this comfort All of us make many mistakes. He was a down-to-earth Jew. He knew that we all mess up. So has anyone here ever regretted anything they've said? Even when it's the moment it's coming out of your mouth, you think, oh, I shouldn't be saying this. How many of us wish they could take it back? Anyone wish they would have said something, but then didn't? St. Jimmy's words, while aimed firstly at wannabe teachers, have a much broader audience in mind. We all make many mistakes in speaking, but we can get a handle on our mouths. Or St. Jimmy wouldn't have highlighted just how important it is that we do, even if it seems impossible. His guiding principle is one he mentions earlier in his letter. It's the royal law of God's holy empire. Love your neighbour as yourself. If it's coming out of your mouth, would you want that said to you? Let your faith work out in your words. (coughs) One of the ways we work out our faith in our lives is in how we speak to one another. Be quick to listen slow to anger and even slower to speak. Faith without works 
is dead. So faith must work out in the way we speak because you are what you speak. It's not for no reason that Jimmy reminds us of Jesus' pictures from the Gospels that he used about the flavour of the water gushing up out of our hearts or the kind of fruit we are hanging off a type of tree. You are what you speak. Will it be tasty and life-giving or poisonous and destructive? And it's not for no reason that Jimmy points us in verse 7 back to Genesis. We've been made in the image of God himself. We've been made rulers over all of creation. We've been given naming rights over all the other creatures and given the power to take control over them, bringing order out of chaos. You see, words have power, real power, power to create worlds, power to create life itself. God spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. The whole of reality is generated by the living word and shaped and contoured by him. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and nothing was made without him speaking it into being. And we, his image bearers, our words shape our world around us and shape our life together. I was reading again this week of the solidarity movement in Poland in the 1980s. You know, people were sicking, sick of living under decades of communism there, sick of the way they were having their free speech stifled and silenced. So they decided to live as though they were free. Part of that was that they began to speak freely. And in less than a decade, they were. And that was the faith of Jesus being worked out in the everyday actions and speech of Polish Catholic Christians. They reshaped reality around them by speaking it into existence. There's a lot of doom and gloom being spoken over the world and into the world at the moment. How much does the world need the church to speak the words of the good news, to speak words that will reshape this reality to be a place of life and hope? And to counter the narrative and the negative speech coming out of the mouths of our politicians. How much are our own personal realities shaped by the things we say about ourselves out loud and in our hearts? How much are our personal realities shaped by the things that others say to us? Both hurtful and helpful. So how about we stop and think for a moment? And I don't expect you to say anything. And this is for you to think about. What is one of the most wonderful things that has ever been said to you? Can you remember who it was, where you were, what it felt like to be there? The feel of the room? the impact it's had on you even down to today? Yet I wonder what is one of the most hurtful things that has ever been said to you? Can you remember? What it felt like? Where you were? Who it was? Which do you remember best? The words of life or the words of death? How have those words, helpful and hurtful, shaped your life up to this point right now? 
I've had the privilege of speaking with an incredible range of people over the course of my ministry and visiting sometimes the extremely old in the nursing homes to hear that even there the damage that has been caused by the words that have been said to them as a little person that has lasted down to their late 90s but also the words of life that have carried them through from when they're a little person all the way down to the near the end of their life. How powerful and important are our words to each other? St. Jimmy calls us to work out our faith through our words, to be quick to listen, slow to anger and slow to speak. He calls us to love our neighbour as ourselves. 2,000 years ago, the living word Jesus came amongst us and caused such a disruption to an evil intercontinental multinational empire that eventually it came to an end. Jesus and his followers reshaped reality around his story. That story, that word was good news. God is not some uncaring, distant being looking to destroy you in judgment. He's your dad. He loves you. He is crazy about you. He forgives you. He sets you free. He is sharing his power with you, working with you and in you to bring this world to its very good end. Despite what the Roman Empire says, despite what Dan Andrews says or anyone else says, this world is coming to a good end. This good news spoken again and again by that mixed bag of humanity called the church amongst some of the most harrowing and distressing days of the human race across time has changed the world and continues to change it. And it will never be defeated. I know many of us have found this last lockdown tough. And there's a lot wrong with the world out there. And there's a lot of talk of doom and gloom. And there's a lot of people saying that this world is stuffed and that it's coming to a bad end. We have the power. We have the words that can reshape reality itself. Don't forget that we are what we speak. Let us pray.